Hi and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at uh, elements and one of the first things we're going to look at is the first group elements which is called the earth alkali metals. Earth alkali metals are very reactive in water. The reactions are as follows. We have, if we take lithium and react it with water, the water which consists of hydrogen and hydroxide ions is split and then the lithium combines with the hydroxide ion to form lithium hydroxide and the hydrogen that's left over is liberated as hydrogen gas. I will take the same if I work down the group of earth alkali metals, I've got sodium plus water. The sodium combines with the hydroxide ion in water to form sodium hydroxide and the, and the hydrogen that's left over the hydrogen ions are then liberated as hydrogen gas. Again, potassium, which is now further down the group, in the same group, potassium reacts with water. Potassium combines with the hydroxide found in water to produce potassium hydroxide. And then the hydrogen that's left over, the hydrogen ions in water that's left over, forms hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas will ignite if the heat is uh, high enough within the reaction. And then the metals that have reacted with water form metal hydroxides. Metal hydroxides are alkali, so if we put a universal indicator, it should tell us whether the alkali was actually formed. So the first thing I've done is I've taken some uh, conical flasks and I'm going to add some water to each of them. And then to check the pH of each of them and to find out whether it's acidic or alkali, we put in a universal indicator and we can clearly see that the water turns green in color, which is an indicator on the pH scale to be neutral. It may be a slight tinge of yellow because water is not absolutely uh, neutral sometimes. It could be depending on how the water is treated. But at the moment we can see it's greenish in color, so we take it as neutral. The first metal I'm gonna look at, obviously hydrogen is above this. Hydrogen is not a metal. It is a gas and it is found in the first group, but it reacts like a first group element. Here I've got lithium which is found in the first group and you notice lithium is floating in the oil that we store it in. Sodium is at the bottom, potassium is at the bottom and this clearly shows that potassium has a lower density than the oil that we're keeping it in, therefore it floats and sodium potassium has a higher density than the oil and therefore it sinks. The other thing you notice is that the lithium is a metal, it's silver but it's turned black in color because it's reacted with oxygen. The oxygen turn, forms an oxide on the surface, therefore it's black in color. You can see uh, sodium's formed a white oxide, and then so has potassium found a white oxide, and then there's certain areas where we've cut it, it's actually turned a little bit of purple in color. But the reason we store them in oil and not water, is obviously they'll react. So we put them in oil in order to stop them from reacting with oxygen uh, or hydroxides in the water. So oil, we wouldn't have that reaction, we can store it safely away. The first one I'm going to take is lithium. I am going to take some, a bit of that lithium. I'm going to dab it on some tissue paper. And the reason I'm doing that is because I just want to remove the oil from the surface. I don't want that reaction to take too slow. I want it to be a fair test because sometimes too much oil on the surface actually causes it to slow down the reaction. I've got my lithium. I'm going to pop it down into my uh, conical flask. And you even notice that the reaction doesn't just happen straight away. And what you're going to start noticing after a while is that as the oil starts to move away from the and float on the water, the metal makes contact with the water and then the reaction starts where lithium is forming lithium hydroxide. Therefore, the universal indicator is starting to turn a bluish, uh, greenish color. And you can see a lot of fizzing. And if you notice, and if you look very closely, uh, uh, maybe you can see there's some gas coming off at the top. Uh, that gas is hydrogen. Uh, alkali metal, that's the reason we call it an alkali metal, because it reacts with water and it forms a metal hydroxide, which is an alkali, and the bubbling is releasing hydrogen gas. A clear color change from neutral to a bluish color, meaning it's now turned to an alkali. So we've got loads of potassium hydroxide, I'm sorry, not potassium, lithium hydroxide in the water, therefore it's gone alkali. The next metal I'm going to take now is sodium. Please notice sodium is lower than lithium in the group. So therefore, as you go down the group, the metals become more reactive. I will do the same. Take some nice pieces of sodium out. Um, 
make sure to dab them on uh, uh, some tissue paper, uh, get all the oil out of it because we don't want it to slow down the reaction. Uh, tissue paper is good, takes out all the oil. I'm going to grab both pieces together and drop that into the water. And what we notice is that there's a large large mark, and there we go. That pop sound is the heat reacting with the hydrogen. And what we've got is the metals really reactive. You can see it's turned into a ball floating on the surface. Now the reason it's skimming on the surface and moving on the surface is because the contact with the water is so hot, uh, the reaction is so hot that it creates a pressure of steam that the metal actually just floats uh, on the surface. And that pop noise you just saw there was that there was enough heat uh, in order to ignite the hydrogen. And again, you can notice that the water has turned from neutral to alkali, which means sodium reacted with the hydroxide ions in the water, making sodium hydroxide and alkali, and all of the gases coming out in the fizzing is hydrogen. But again, notice sodium, a far more vigorous reaction compared to lithium. That's because you're going down the group. You go down the group, there are more electrons or in the group. Next, oops, sorry. Next, we're going to be looking at uh, the other metal, which is potassium. I'm going to take some pieces of potassium. Now, potassium has gone further down the group. Please remember, potassium is, how can we say, rather very reactive. Uh, the reason I'm taking such a piece is because most of it is actually oxidized. Uh, it's formed an oxide layer, so it's not much in there. This, this, it's not a very fresh piece. But anyway, we will use it. I want you to notice how vigorous the reaction is. It's further down. It has more atomic shells around it. Um, and then notice what actually happens. I take my lithium. I'm going to drop it into the water. Step back very quickly. Lots and lots of hydrogen being formed. Very vigorous reaction. Lots of heat given off. You notice a lot of popping and uh, taking place and the uh, amount, here we go, the amount of hydrogen that's just being uh, created and also it's not just hydrogen, don't be mistaken, it can also be steam because water is vaporized by the heat, uh, turning it into steam as well. And you saw the flame in there and you can also notice that the alkali solution is much darker compared to lithium and sodium because it's a more reactive and what we found, they formed is basically potassium hydroxide which gave off hydrogen gas. Uh, remember, uh, alkali metal reacts with water, forms a metal hydroxide and releases hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas has squeaky pop noise, we know it's hydrogen, and the universal indicator 